Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be performing an autopsy of a dead smart switch. We'll see if I can figure out what failed on it and see what else is inside this sealed, brilliant smart switch. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. While you're at it, if you like what I do here and you want to help to support the channel, there's affiliate links in the video description to a bunch of the home automation gadgets that I've reviewed in the past. And there's other ways to support the channel as well, such as signing up for NordVPN using my affiliate link or supporting the channel directly through my Buy Me A Coffee link. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So a couple of weeks ago, this brilliant smart switch just plain stopped working. I had it set up to monitor the power consumption of my desk. So it was powering a couple of laptop chargers and my 49 inch ultra wide monitor. While it was monitoring, I never saw the power consumption peak past about 240 watts. And that was with the display powering my work laptop after running on battery for a day, a laptop charger charging my personal laptop after running on battery for a day, and another laptop that I was running some benchmarks on. So it was drawing a fair bit of power. In normal operation, it would just sit there drawing about 120 to 150 watts, depending on how hard I was pushing a machine or how many machines I had plugged in. So I can be fairly confident that I didn't draw too much power from it. And I also had some automation set up to shut the power down every night and then power it back up every morning. But I did take a look at my Grafana dashboard and from what I can see, it failed around 30 minutes before it was supposed to trigger. And ironically, I had disabled the trigger for that night that it failed because I had an electrician here the following day upgrading my switchboard. Now, it seems to be in a failure mode where it has absolutely no power to the smart switch at all. And when it first failed, I did notice the telltale smell of magical blue smoke or electrical burning. So I do have a suspicion that the fault lies in the circuit that turns the 240 volts AC from the wall into five volts DC required for the microcontroller inside here. Bizarrely, I do have two other identical smart switches on the same electrical circuit and all three identical smart switches were all running behind a UPS, which includes surge protection. So I don't believe the root cause of this failure was a power surge either. Now, before we dig into this smart switch and take a look inside, a quick warning. Do not try this at home. This video is intended for education and entertainment purposes only. This device at one point in its life had mains electricity running through it. And there's a high likelihood that there are capacitors inside here that could reasonably have maintained a potentially lethal charge, even though this has been unplugged for quite some time. Electricity is dangerous and it can kill you. You have been warned. On a lighter note, from the 11th to the 13th of March 2023, I'll be at the Train and Hobby Show at Sandown Racecourse and Entertainment Centre in Melbourne's South East. The Train and Hobby Show showcases the best hobbies in Australia, from model railways, ham radio and electronics, radio control models, makers and arts and crafts, and this year for the very first time, the Train and Hobby Show is adding computing and home automation into the mix. I'll be at the Train and Hobby Show for all three days and I'll have demos of gadgets like some light bulbs, some smart switches, and if I can figure out a way to display the guts of this dead smart switch safely, we'll have that on display as well. I'll have some basic automations set up to showcase some simple automations that you can do in your own home. I'll have some Raspberry Pis showing off my Grafana dashboard for energy and environmental monitoring that I have in place here as well. I'll also be giving away some Hivemind automation stickers. So if you're in Melbourne from the 11th to the 13th of March, 2023, come on down to Sandown Racecourse and say hello. 
Get your tickets today at trainandhobbyshow.com.au. That's T-R-A-I-N-A-N-D-H-O-B-B-Y-S-H-O-W.com.au. And now, back to the autopsy. So I'm going to switch over to this camera and we'll obviously need to start by opening the unit up. Now, full disclosure, I have opened this up already to sneak a look to see what was inside, but that was as far as I got. Now to open it up, I did take the tip of a flat bladed screwdriver and just get it in between the plastic here. And I just worked my way all the way around um, just twisting that a little bit uh, to get it to release. Now, because I've already done that, I should be able to take uh, the tip of my spudger here and just get that in behind there. Uh, and I can get up and under and pry it open and I'll work my way around just prying that up. Uh, so with uh, the plastic released all the way around, I can just pull up on uh, the pins there and we'll just pop that to the side uh, and we can flip this over and we'll see the electronics there. Now, taking a whiff inside the front case does reveal a bit of a plasticky burning smell, that kind of magical blue smoke smell that's just contained the smoke there, I think. Uh, and if we look closely, there's not really any kind of telltale signs of damage here. We do have this filter cap here. Uh, we've got a couple of electrolytic caps here. Uh, looking at this one, this one just moved a little bit. So I have a feeling this might be our problem right here. Uh, this cap here, it's got a slightly bulgy top. And when I press on the top, I'm not sure if you can make that out on camera, but it is quite loose there. So that's right next to this button here. And uh, it actually leads into the controller here. Now, it's a little bit hard to make out, uh, but this is a TYW. E2S controller. This is actually an ESP8266 based uh, controller here. So there are some solder pads on the back where you could reasonably, if you were going to reprogram this, you could possibly probe these pins uh, and then put Tasmoda onto one of these units. Now I'll see if I can slide the back case off. Yeah, looking, looking inside here, it kind of looks like the pins might actually be molded around uh, there and then it's soldered on. So I may not be able to get the bottom off. Uh, what I will try and do, uh, I'll go grab a pair of pliers and see if I can uh, get this cap out of the way because uh, I'm pretty sure that is what has failed. So I'm just going to try and grab that cap with these pliers and see if it will come out it's not it's not loose enough to pull off the board there we go uh, so we've uh, just kind of uh, pulled it off the board uh, and you might just be able to make it out uh, in there the two electrodes it had definitely let go it's definitely this cap that's failed um so taking a look at the cap if we can see that on camera it's a uh, 470 microfarad 10 volt capacitor so as i suspected it was definitely on the dc side that this unit failed now it's possible that i might be able to get the back off if i desolder these three pins here uh, you can see we've got uh the uh three pins so there's a ground uh, there's our uh, switched neutral and our switched live there uh, we've got the two relays so we have both switched live and switched neutral on this unit which is quite nice um, it would be interesting to see if i could resurrect this uh, by replacing that capacitor though so there you have it 
an autopsy of a dead smart home device. Now, the information we've learned here today about the dead capacitors will definitely be influencing my future purchasing decisions. I really don't think that I'll be buying any more of these brilliant smart switches, but let me know what you think in the comments section below. I will have a go at seeing if I can resurrect this smart switch at some point, uh, and I will definitely also be taking a look at flashing this uh, two-year unit to see if I can get Tasmoda onto that as well. That's all we have for this video, and I do hope that it's helped you in your home automation journey and making better purchasing decisions. Be sure to comment down below with a home automation idea that you'd like to see me cover in a future video. Don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. And while you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll get a notification whenever I release new videos. And that tends to be every week. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Any contributions that you make through buy me a coffee get put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.